Hello, I'm Julia. Welcome to the Mind Matters panel. Robin Williams once said, I used to think the worst thing in life was to end up all alone. It's not. The worst thing in life is to end up with people that make you feel alone. And so today I'm building relationships with Young and Well Cooperative Research Centre Managing Director Dr Michael Cargreg, Brain and Mind Research Institute Executive Director and Professor of Psychiatry Professor Ian Hickey, Deputy Principal Rob Blackley and school psychologist Sarah Innes. Let's take a look at how Phil does relationships and belonging at Eagleton. Mental health starts with good relationships. Sup, G, mommy. <laughs> oh, Bella, I love that foil work. Is that cut or weave? Cut. Ah. Grace. What? How good was last night's origami? So, well, good. Anime was last term. We're into K-pop now. What pop? K-pop. You know, G-Dragon. Epic yeah. High. B2B. Yeah. Super Junior. Not Super Junior. EXO. Oh. Maybe. Oh, OK, <laughs> settle down. <laughs> well, keep me up, eh? Anyway, relationships and belonging. How do we instill a sense of belonging in our students? Well, obviously, we've got the school uniform and the school song, but we wanted to go further. That's how we came up with the school tattoo. Oh, and here it is. Isn't it sensational? The Eagleton Hawk. <laughs> well, we wanted the eagle, but Hawksbury High already had that, so... Oh, no, no, Gemma, that's not an appropriate place. Thank you. It's only meant to be on the arm. And the lip. Maybe the neck. We strive really hard to create an inclusive environment where we celebrate individual difference. That's why each group has got its own special area. Like the uh, oh, nerds over there. The emos. Jocks. And, of course, the mean girls. Now, each of these groups have got their own special... Ah. Chris, you're a jock. Not a mean girl. And get back to where you belong. Thank you. They, uh, they do like to experiment a little bit. Yep, this is one sweet tattoo. I can't wait to post it on Instagram or whatever the young people do. Now, look, what kind of relationships are we actually talking about here? Do they need to be Facebook official? And when should I update my status, I wonder, Sarah? Look, I think it doesn't have to be to the level that Phil's trying. He's, he's trying, though, he's isn't he's he? He's trying so hard. <laughs> I think it's just about having a working relationship and knowing a bit about your students that you're working with. So sit down at the start of the year, go through the role, and is there at least one staff member who can say they know something about a student and if not can we make sure that we don't have anyone flying under the radar so the very basic levels about knowing your students and having something in common or something that you can talk to them about that they love and, and are passionate about. Well relationships run across all sorts of different ways they need to be different we all need different mm -hmm. kinds of relationships relationships with people who are like us I love the idea of crossing across boundaries <laughs> relationships with people who are not like us mm -hmm. to understand their world mm -hmm. and what we might happen Relationships with people with different ages, different backgrounds. So I think in schools, obviously with teachers, but also with other children from different Definitely. years. So you can learn and model Definitely. someone who's been through something like you've been through mm. in a particular reason. So relationships serve different purposes, but they do also make you feel part of the situation. I think the Robin Williams quote is fabulous. Mm. You know, it's not how many you have, it's whether you have the feeling that you're on your own mm -hmm. as distinct from you are part of something. It might be with one friend, with one teacher, others will have 20 good friends. But that feeling that you are connected is essential. And, and it, that can be done proactively. You can build that. It shouldn't be random. I'm very big on the idea of keeping kids busy in groups. So art, music, dance, drama, sport, all done under the umbrella of the school. I think it does three things. One is it encourages those really important peer relationships. Two, it actually gives you the opportunity to take healthy risks at a time developmentally when you really need to do that mm. to figure out who you are. But also, it actually exposes you potentially to yet another charismatic adult that mm. might be a teacher in the form of a coach mm. of some sort. Mm. Everybody wins. In the mid-80s, 
because there was no drama in high schools, so I couldn't do it. And so my mother luckily found a class where you could do it on Saturdays, four hours of, of stuff. Mm. For me, it was not just about all of that, but also you had created or you, people had created for you this identity at high school. You were allowed to go somewhere else and be a bit different mm. and be a bit more um, bold and just knowing there was that Saturday day where you were going to do something that you really love with different people and you thought, I don't have to be like that all the time, but I'm in that rut now, mm. so I'll have to stay in it. There was an escape. Well, you raised mm. key issues. Schools mm. can't do everything. Mm. In fact, these days, many other issues like sport outside of school, things that you do differently. You might do drama or music outside as part of your local community. So I think one of the problems we have is the school does everything. School's the only community. You know, there are more diverse communities mm. that and are And you don't need there. 50. You only need one thing that you connect with. Mm. Like sometimes so developing things. skill, developing yeah. self-esteem. But to pick up Michael's point, and particularly for the boys, the doing. If you say we're going to sit down and talk about relationships, <laughs> you know, half the audience Forget has it. gone. Yeah. Yeah. The other half's worried what the other half's going to say about them. Yeah. You know, as distinct from doing things in common. We've seen this in growing ups and the kind of men's sheds mm. movements mm. and something. Doing the common activity that you enjoy, you'll get the conversations and the relationship and often build skills together build common interest and that's you know at the heart of the thing so I think when we're talking about relationships it's creating the environments in which you do relationships in ways that suit you. Rob what do you do in your school to build relationships? For a start with the, our, just our uh, homeroom structure uh, most schools might have only one teacher who's assigned as a homeroom where they meet with them each morning we've got to actually got a structure where we've actually got two in some cases three and um, teachers, not just teachers, but it's also our support staff. So there might be integration aides, there'll be our librarians who are also acting as homerooms mm. so that um, the students or the kids can actually identify with not only one, but maybe two or three mm. staff members. Mm. Um, now, that's a unique situation. I hadn't seen that before uh, in my previous school. Mm. Uh, and, it, and it works well. Our school's only just recently moved into having year 11 and 12. So that's... It's changing... The, the, the culture of the school. So it's, it's allowing our Year 7s to identify with our senior students, our Year 11 and 12. Mm -hmm. So it might be just in a school assembly, um, someone celebrating someone's success in music or drama in our assembly rather than just me standing up there in, in, in the front lecturing the students. It might be we'll have a music performance from our students. Mm -hmm. um, so it's again, it's celebrating that, su mm -hmm. that success. What about students or parents that teachers find difficult or challenging? Not all relationships in real life yep. are good. These no, are different. Right. No. So that's that's right. yeah. One of the learnings about yep. relationships is we intrinsically get on with people yes. who do the same yep. thing, drama and whatever else. And other people we don't get on. There's issue of respect yes. yep. and, yep. Of, and mm. of not creating an adverse environment, yep. but relationships are big challenges Absolutely. as well as their great supports. And that's a key learning through this kind of period and you might need to change relationships, mm. change peer groups, mm. identify, I think your idea, there's more than one teacher, yes. the one assigned to you yes. may not be the one that's yes. best for you, yes. <laughs> there's somebody else you identify with better who sort of is in the world in the way you are, mm. having that opportunity to work through relationships are complicated business for mm. life. But how do you deal with um, sometimes students are just Difficult. difficult. Well, How do you build a relationship with that difficult like student? Like parenting, you know, it may not be a popularity contest. Mm. <laughs> so if you're hoping to be loved by everybody, mm. forget it. You know, because the mm. modelling issue here is really important in these particular mm. set of issues. So they're really important mm. issues for student, uh, where teachers are having to respond about appropriate behaviour in certain situations, but within respectful kind of ways of doing it. So these are really models for life mm. about how to deal with other sets of issues. So I think the issue about, you know, teachers are still teachers, mm. just mm. like parents are still parents. Mm. That doesn't mean you can't have a very high quality relationship. And I think the other issue is really the really the relationships that really matter are peer relationships mm. at most of these ages. Mm. So facilitating better peer relationships, you know, is part of what is actually also going on. A lot of what's going on in kids' lives isn't about you at all. Mm. Yes. <laughs> it's about yeah. what they're struggling mm. with Absolutely. at a peer level. But they may not, when you've got 15-year-olds asking 15-year-olds for advice, they may not have the answer. Mm. One of the things that... Uh, the higher life forms, as I refer to psychologists, <laughs> uh, engage in on a regular basis, is we try and teach kids, uh, and again, the curriculum material here from Beyond Blue's mm. sensibility package, the Mind Matters framework curriculum material, it's about teaching those kids to pick up on Ian's point, conflict resolution, mm. anger management, mm. problem solving, decision yes. making, those social and emotional competencies they might not have because of their age mm. or because of their parenting, but it's really important that they get them from somewhere. Your know, popularity contest thing's interesting. Mm. I mean, as a kid, I know I was the real... Um, I wanted to be the teacher's pet. I wanted to be liked. <laughs> yeah. And it's a terrible thing to take into life because you can't be authentic in anything you do. So as an actor, it's even worse because mm. you want to be liked all the time. And I luckily had this teacher at acting school 
who took me aside and said, you do realise that you're always trying to um, seek my approval. approval. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I went, no. I... And it all came to me. Mm. She made, gave me the great service of mm. saying, I will not be your guru. This is not how I work. Mm. I'm pick you've picked the wrong person. That's a key self-confidence thing. It was but, incredible. Know, yes. No matter how good you are, yeah. other people, because they're in the world differently, aren't going to like that. It's mm. not what they're attracted mm -hmm. to. Mm. So the authenticity issue, which is mm. a self-esteem issue, this is a critical mm. transaction mm. going on every minute of every day mm. in a teenager's life. Mm. You know, so Older people, experienced people can provide that. Michael, what about you? I think you start with a clear understanding of the kid. And the way I break that up is that in every kid, and we talked about it right at the beginning, there's risk and protective factors in a whole lot of different domains. So within the individual, within their family, within the school and within their peer group. And it's really about maximising the protective factors, particularly around peer and school. So you've got to have a knowledge of the kid, understand their strengths and weaknesses, and then give them multiple opportunities to use the skills that they do have in a way that's meaningful to them. But a lot of people need help. You know, if you're good at social relationships, schools are... Ball. Yeah, it's a ball. You know, there's yeah. lots of opportunity. If you're not so good, a bit autistic, a mm. bit anxious, a bit whatever, just a bit reserved, a bit shy, it's hard. Mm. So facilitating that, I mean, because we see in all these experiences, if kids can name friends they have at school, if they can name more than one other, if they can name more than one teacher, they feel much better about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, but they don't necessarily easily do that. So, you know, when you're saying to the kids who are not good at it, well, what you need to do is make, make more friends. What you, mm. you know, if they could do that, they would. Mm. So schools have an opportunity, I think, for the facilitation yeah. through participation, yeah. through recognising the more vulnerable kids, making sure, particularly critical transitions like primary school to secondary mm. school, early years of secondary school, some of the, you know, mm. issues that are going on. So that kind of inclusion sure. comes from yeah. everywhere. Yeah. yeah, so that, you know, I think the idea that where teachers know really no different kids. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You know, facilitating the connections is a key role for schools to take on. Everyone's life is simpler if people are connected. Yeah. And it's about also providing a range of different activities across the school. Mm. It's just not meeting the needs of the school football team or, or, or the, the ATS team or those sort of things. It's a whole range of And do you have to only ever celebrate success? Can you celebrate the effort as well? I think it's absolutely essential to yeah. celebrate the effort in this world where we... Because we're very driven oh, by... Very driven by yeah. success and praise and false praise, you know, that, mm. oh, oh, that was you look beautiful or excellent, you know, excellent grade. We, we focus on the outcome rather than on the effort. Well, there's a challenge yeah. for schools at the moment, isn't it? I mean, mm. I've a debate with a mm. principal recently. <laughs> Who are they marketing to? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the marketing of schools to be successful, whether it's in NAPLAN or it's in the market or whatever, big issue... Mm -hmm saying to marketed parents, I got an argument with the principal, saying, actually, I want my kid to be connected and socially successful after school, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's a different mm -hmm. kind of thing. So I think the, the celebration of the degree of participation, the degree of connected, is harder to get a hold of than mm -hmm. we won a prize, we won a trophy, this many of our kids did well at the year 12 yeah. completion type thing. Yeah. And so a, there is a real social mm -hmm. challenge for us here mm -hmm. about marketing what is really important. And I'd say as a parent, what really matters to me is to have a kid who's competent after school, who's mm -hmm. grown up and can really exist in the real world. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying that even though they may be successful at high school, in that environment, it's what are the skills the that they... Yeah. It's mm -hmm. the skills being developed here. The goal mm -hmm. is not to just graduate high school. Mm. After that, we're on our own as yeah, parents. Okay. You know, back yeah, we got them again. Yeah, but I think if you surveyed any parents, what do you <laughs> want from your child when they finish school? I want them to be happy. Inclusion is easier said than done, though. How do you actually go about it? There's a particular group in schools that I think are incredibly vulnerable, and that's a GLBTIQ mm. group. We know that in any school, it's going to be at least 10% of the population. What we also know is they have much higher levels of mental health problems than mm. kids who are straight. Therefore, I think the idea of having uh, the Rainbow Coalition, for example, which exists in this particular state, where schools sign up to a particular charter and go out of their way mm. to develop policies and procedures to make sure that that group is recognised and made to feel comfortable, that, to me, is absolutely essential. Mm. Well, in some ways, I'd say cultural diversity is easier to address. It's obvious. Mm. Someone doesn't speak the same language. They dress differently. They eat differently. Individual diversity is much harder. So in any school, 10 or 15% of the kids will feel absolutely alone, mm. isolated. And it's anxiety or the autistic spectrum mm. issues or depression. They don't find it easy and they're don't, they are different, in a mm. sense. So the inclusiveness issue, the connected, is incredibly relevant. So 
the teachers knowing who the students are, mm. having a sense of who's connected or not, monitoring that within schools mm. and classes so the kids have friends and those who need the assistance. So diversity comes in many forms. Mm. The obvious ones mm. we see, but some of the others are not so obvious. And I think what's happened is a recognition in the community that these issues are much, much more important. And we're all on a sort of journey about, OK, do we see it? And then how do we respond? The key issue here that those people have the opportunity to make relationships. Mm. Well, we'll finish with this thought about relationships from Jared Kintz. I think the key indicator for wealth is not good grades, work ethic or IQ. I believe it's relationships. Ask yourself two questions. How many people do I know? And how much ransom money could I get for each one? Hmm.